Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. Donald Trump Jr. is going to be talking with us live in a moment. But first, my opening statement. There are two systems of justice in America. One for everyday Americans and one for Hillary Rodham Clinton. Follow me. March 4, 2015, a federal preservation subpoena is issued for Hillary's Benghazi emails. Mind you, we wouldn't have known she even had any emails because she lied and said she didn't. Except a Romanian hacker named Guccifer hacked her buddy Sidney Blumenthal's emails. Blumenthal, of course, a man Barack Obama would not allow in his State Department. Seems Hillary lied to Barack, too. The two of them emailing classified information about Benghazi. And so begins the mission of top lieutenant undersecretary Patrick Kennedy to declassify Hillary's top secret classified Benghazi email of foreign activities of the United States, including confidential sources on Hillary's homebrewed server. The email that actually started the FBI's criminal investigation. Now, if his name sounds familiar, this is the same Patrick Kennedy that Hillary put in charge of that Blue Ribbon Accountability Review Board for lessons learned from Benghazi. By the way, already learned from the Cobar Towers Review Board, lessons never implemented by Hillary. The same Patrick Kennedy who appointed the Clinton pals who then chose not to question Hillary Clinton, the Secretary of State, about Benghazi. Now, Kennedy knows the urgency of destroying this particular email as opposed to thousands of others. So he engages in what some say is an attempt to bribe and others say is a quid pro quo discussion, offering the FBI long sought positions overseas in exchange for getting rid of top secret emails. Curious that our ambassador Chris Stevens personally and his staff requested security more than 600 times to protect their lives. Yet Kennedy can come up with positions to cover Hillary's career. FBI agent summaries known as 302s say that Kennedy actually offered a quid pro quo. FBI positions to declassify and then mark with a code nine, which would then archive the email in the basement of the Department of State never to be seen again. And the FBI agent, although he felt pressured, refused the offer. Kennedy then makes the same offer to the FBI head of counterintelligence. And when this offer is refused, Kennedy, knowing the FBI criminal investigation is already underway, asks, will the FBI make a public statement about this? And when told they will not, he knows the coast is clear. He'll deal with the FBI and the Department of Justice later. But for now, Hillary can publicly lie to all of us. I did not email any um, classified material to anyone on my email. There is no classified material. So now, Kennedy, one of the darkest characters in the Clinton playbook, and that's saying something, folks, skates. But then the 302s are actually released. And Congress says, wait a minute, that sounds like bribery, obstruction of justice, contempt of Congress. Is it? The State Department, the one that wouldn't even allow an inspector general oversight, and the one that had no Hillary Clinton information available under freedom of information to the press, suggest the FBI is lying. Really? Both of the agents are lying. Maybe they misunderstood. And by the way, since the State Department is willing to say that the FBI got it wrong, let's do the whole Mountie, folks. How about the FBI director got it wrong when he said the head of the State Department shouldn't be charged? Hmm. Others say, you know what? Quid pro quos, horse trading. It's what they do in Washington. We're just not used to watching them make the sausage. Come on. Not declassifying and destroying 
top secret information on the assassination around the uh, killing of our Benghazi ambassador, or Libya ambassador, which is under federal subpoena that's supposed to be retained and preserved. A pathological liar who is actually running to be our commander in chief. Others say this is what they do in D.C. There's no crime. From a criminal point of view, however, as long as there was no intention to prevent Congress from knowing that the original classification was to be classified and then it was changed, if that would have happened for a public release, for a FOIA release, that would not be a crime. You know, it's very easy to throw around the term crime. Since when in the history of American criminal justice does one have to announce, hear ye, hear ye. It is my intent now to commit this crime before he can be held to account. And if there was no intent to prevent Congress from knowing, answer this. Why didn't anyone tell Congress of at least the attempt to bribe a federal official or, as some want to call it, a quid pro quo? The FBI didn't which kind of makes me think that they knew right from the get-go that they weren't going to be filing charges before they even started. Kennedy sure as hell didn't tell Congress. And I actually spoke with one Trey Gowdy, congressman, the chair of the Select Committee on Benghazi, who told me no one reached out to tell him that there was an attempt to prevent him and Congress from getting the information that he had subpoenaed. Call it what you will, I say it stinks. It's real simple, folks. I spent three decades fighting for equal rights and equal justice and a level playing field for all. We take pride in this great nation that we are all equal under the law. And for centuries, Lady Justice, with bandages over her eyes, symbolizes that justice is blind, that it matters not who you are. No one is above the law, and no one is below it. Tonight, though, there are tears beneath those bandages. And that's my open. Tell me what you think on my Facebook page or Twitter. Hashtag Judge Janine.